Well, hello and welcome to Walking in the Light, our weekly discussion of the Seventh-day Adventist Adult Bible Study. We are studying again from the book of Genesis. This week we study lesson number two. It is entitled, The Fall. The Fall. Last week we looked at God's amazingly good creation. Uh, this week we're going to study what went wrong. And so we invite you, as always, to invite a friend, grab your Bibles, your quarterlies, study along with us. We are sure that you will be blessed. Also want to remind you, you can obtain your own copy of uh, our quarterly by going to the website absg.adventist.org. That's absg.adventist.org. There you'll be able to uh, find the link, click on it, and you'll be able to download your copy so you can study at your own leisure and share a word or two with a friend. So, if God made everything so wonderfully good, what went wrong? Stick around. We're going to explore that, and we're going to see that amidst all the chaos, there is wonderful, wonderful, marvelous hope. We'll be right back. Well, thank you for staying with us on Walking in the Light. We are studying lesson number two, the fall. And it promises to be a powerful, very thought-provoking study. I pray that God will open your heart, your understanding, and will reveal truths hitherto unknown to all of us. As usual, we begin with our memory verse and the word of prayer. Elder Gordon, would you bring our memory verse for us tonight? And Elder Thomas, please lead us in prayer. Let's pray, Father, in heaven again. Give you thanks for your goodness, for your mercies, for your grace. We thank you for your wonderful love towards us, O God. We thank you for reminding us of this great hope that we have in salvation. We thank you for showing us the cross where we were and where you have brought us from and what is planned for us. So as we open your words this evening, we ask that you might open our hearts, give us understanding, help us to acknowledge and recognize that it is in you that we live and hope and have our being and it's by your grace that we see. So may your spirit be with us now, we pray for Christ. Amen, amen. Thank you, Elder Thomas. Thank you, Elder Gordon. We begin the fall. Elder Bell, in a sentence, what do you understand the fall to mean? When we talk about the fall, what are we talking about? Coming short of the expectation or the demand of an agreed purpose or plan. All right, Elder Thomas, let me extend the question a little deeper. When we talk about the fall in terms of God's creation, God's good creation, and where we are now, what are we talking about? I think we're talking about um, deterioration, moving from perfect to becoming unperfect. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So there's, you consider it to be a fall. Okay, okay. God? Uh, God created... Um, all things, mm -hmm. heavens and the earth, and you created human beings. Mm -hmm. And because of sin, because of forefathers' sin, sin has um, passed down from generation to generation, and uh, all men fall. But we're so thankful that Jesus Christ came and that uh, he can make things right. All right, let's go to the scripture. We want to pick it back up. We're going to go back to Genesis chapter 2. Hello, Thomas, Genesis chapter 2, verses 16 and 17, Genesis chapter 2, verses 16 and 17. We want to revisit a passage of scripture there. What does it say? Genesis chapter 2, verse 16, it says, mm -hmm. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, mm -hmm. You may surely eat of every tree of the garden, mm -hmm. 
but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat, for in the day that you eat of it you shall surely die. All right, Elder Bell, what was this? How would you describe what God was saying here to Adam and Eve in a sentence or two? He was saying, while I've given you freedom of choice and freedom of movement in having created all the beautiful things that ne of necessity, there is a warning. All right, so he was warning them. Yes. Okay, mm -hmm. okay, and the warning is don't... Warning, don't go beyond this boundary. Okay, and specifically from the text. Specifically said, do not eat of this tree. Yes. And if you do, you will die. All right, so it was a warning, Elder Thomas, against what? Uh, disobedience. Disobedience. Yes. It was a warning against disobedience. And Gordon, what was the end result of that disobedience? What would be the end result of that disobedience? Uh, if they disobeyed, they would surely die. They would surely die. So would you say that this was a selfish father who was not looking out for the best interests of his creation? Or was this, does this seem like a loving father who was trying to ensure his children preserve the life that he had called them to? What would you say, Elder Thomas? Yes, uh, certainly it's, it's, a, it's a loving father. Mm -hmm. um, setting out the, the boundaries, mm -hmm. letting them know that there's, there, there will be a problem or, mm -hmm. or there's a situation here where you want to be aware of. Um, so if, if you cross this boundary, if you eat this thing, you're going to die. So okay. everything else is good, fine. You can have of everything else, mm -hmm. but don't touch this one. All right. So Elder Bell, within that warning, that good and gracious warning, was the choice to obey or to disobey and with obedience or with disobedience come certain consequences. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And um, obviously it was for their better good that um, God not only placed them in the garden, yes. but he instructed them yes. and made provision for them right. that there was, of no there was no necessity for them to go beyond the boundary. Absolutely. That is such a powerful point. It was for their good That's right. that a good and gracious God gave them this warning yes. or this prohibition yes. to preserve their life. Of course, right. we know it served as a test of loyalty, That's right. but it was ultimately to preserve mm. their life and, and to keep them from that. Now, yes. Elder Thomas, implicit in the text, in the day that you eat of it. So there is a direction in the form of a warning, Elder God. Mm -hmm. Do not eat of it. That's the direction. There could be disobedience. Then, so if you choose not to follow the directive, you end up disobeying. That's what the That's text right. says. That's right. And after disobedience would come disaster, right? That's right. Death. Disaster. Mm -hmm. That's right. Absolutely. But we know that amid that, Adam and Eve, they did eat, they did disobey, and disaster ensued. But our memory text comes into the midst of God dealing with the aftermath of this disobedience to his directive yes. that brought its disaster. So let's read our memory text once again. What does it say, Elder Bell? You have it right up there. Go right there. And I will put enmity between you and the woman. Mm hmm and between your seed and her seed, yes. he shall bruise your head, and you shall bruise his heel. His heel. Gordon, in the context of what we have just laid down, a text like this, does it, what does it bring? Does it bring hope? Does it bring fear? Does it bring hope to Adam and Eve who would have fallen into this situation? What do you think? Yeah, it brings hope. I mean, if they disobeyed, they would have to pay the consequence. Mm -hmm. And um, because they disobeyed, mm -hmm. they, are, uh, they did um, face the consequences. Mm -hmm. So it brings hope to us that even though that we disobeyed, even though they disobeyed and we disobeyed today, mm -hmm. there's hope for us. All right. Elder Thomas, where specifically in that verse do you see that hope of note, that hope of deliverance, that hope of grace coming through in that first prophecy? It, it speaks of, of one who would come to the woman and who would um, fight in this conflict with the serpent mm -hmm. and he would win mm -hmm. on their behalf. Yeah. Wow. So Elder Bell, even at our worst, when we are receiving the worst penalty, a loving God says, I have made provision to deliver you mm -hmm. out of the disaster into which you have plunged yourself 
by disobeying my directive, my warning to you. Yes, but he's also said, I'm saying in a clever way, very wise way, right. that this will take a struggle. Okay. It will not be like a pie in the sky, you just have it here. Mm -hmm. You disobey, mm -hmm. you're free now. Yeah. It's gonna take a struggle yeah. and it'll be a, a warfare. Right. But be assured that you will, we, the humanity will be victorious. All right, so let's recap where we could come on Saturday is the sum of the lesson. Mm -hmm. There is this directive given in the form of a warning Yes. It's given from a good God to preserve life. Yes. You have the option of obeying or disobeying. If you yes. disobey, disaster That's ensues. Right. Yes. But even if you disobey and disaster en ensues, deliverance would come yes. in the form of my provision of grace That's through right. the Son, Jesus That's right. Christ. That's right. Why should someone listen to us tonight, Elder Thomas, as we discuss this lesson mm. of the fall? Because it sounds so gruesome, the fall, you know? So why should someone then listen to us tonight as we discuss this? The fact is that we're living in, um, in reality, mm -hmm. we see the destruction, mm -hmm. we see the devastation, mm -hmm. we see the vice, the evil that takes place um, in relationships mm -hmm. between man and man. Yeah. And such a promise that this would happen, that there would be a struggle but there would also be a victory yeah. on the side of those who trust God. Mm -hmm. I think it, it brings hope yeah. that once we trust God, mm -hmm. then a time will come mm -hmm. when we will be delivered from all this <coughs> confusion. Yeah. It will be over sometime. All right. What about you, Gordon? What has this you, lesson got to offer me tonight? Uh, the, lesson has to, to the lesson has to offer us hope. Mm -hmm. You know, for people who would ask the question, I mean, just one little fruit, I mean, one little disobedience. Why is the world in so much chaos and so much problems? Mm -hmm. Look at all the things that happened mm -hmm. in the past, all the wars, mm -hmm. all the destructions, mm -hmm. the earthquakes, and, you know, all the, 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 the things that happen in the world. Yeah. Just one little disobedience. Yeah. Why is it that this world is so much chaos? chaos? But God is a perfect God. Why? God wants us to be obedient to him always. Okay. So tonight, if you should listen to us, because if you are filled with all those perplexing questions, yes. mm. the answer is found in the story of the fall, where we would see something interrupted God good design. Yes. And the bell? Why? Why? Why should folk be listening to us tonight as we discuss the fall? Because hopefully at the end of our discussion tonight, those who are listening would come to appreciate the, 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 uh, the level to which this fall has taken humanity. Mm -hmm. And the, some of the questions they have, yeah. why God, why this, why that, mm -hmm. hopefully will be answered to the promise of salvation. All right. Okay. So let's explore it then. Let's see how it got all, start, all got started. Genesis chapter 3, verses 1 and 2, Elder Gordon. And uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 3, Elder Thomas. And uh, Elder Bell, Revelation chapter 12, verses 7 to 9. And the questions we want to ponder is who is the serpent and uh, how does he go about plying his craft? All right, let's go right ahead, Elder God. Now the serpent was more stubborn than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, has not God shall... Had not God said ye shall eat of every tree of the garden? Mm -hmm. And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of every fruit of the trees of the garden. All right, so let me ask you right off the text, Gordon, verse 1. Who are we introduced to, or what are we introduced to in verse 1? We are introduced to the serpent. The serpent, what does the text say? Now the serpent was more stubborn than any beast All of the right. field. So he was more wise than right. any beast of the field. So who is the serpent? Elder Bell, Revelation chapter 12, verse 7 to 9. Let's identify who is this serpent. The Bible says, mm -hmm. And there was war in heaven, mm -hmm. and Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, mm -hmm. and the dragon fought and his angels, mm -hmm. and prevailed not. Neither was there a place found any more in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out. That old serpent mm -hmm. caused the devil mm -hmm. and Satan, mm -hmm. which deceived the whole world. Mm -hmm. He was cast out into the earth and his angels were cast out with him. All right. So again, who is the serpent? Revelation identifies him as? The devil. The devil 
Satan. 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 The mm-hmm. devil, Satan. All right, Elder Thomas, mm-hmm. let's see what else 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 3 adds to our understanding of who this serpent is. All right, and Paul speaking says, but I am afraid that as the serpent deceived Eve Mm -hmm. by his cunning, Mm -hmm. your thoughts will be led astray from a sincere and pure devotion to Christ. All right, so we go from finding out who this serpent is to his character, his Mm. method of operation. (laughs) And the word that is used is cunning. 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 So he's smart and he exercises his cunning according to Revelation 7 12 by doing what? Deceiving. Deceiving the whole world. And That's he right. Deceived, deceived Eve. Adam and Eve. Yes. Okay. So his way is through deception. deception. Absolutely. Mm. And he is cunning. Cunning. Subtle. Subtle. So he's cunningly deceptive. And I just want to point out yes. too that he's the enemy of God mm-hmm. and he wanted to, um, you know, um, Tell Eve, Adam and Eve, mm-hmm. that they should not trust God. Okay. All right. So he is the enemy of God. He's opposed to God. Mm-hmm. And he goes about playing his trade through mm. deception. That's right. Cleverly disguising himself. Now, here comes the serpent talking. <laughs> How does that manifest the subtleness or the craftiness of the serpent? He goes to Adam and Eve, perfectly innocent people created in this perfect environment, this paradise that God has placed him in, and he assumes the form of a serpent. Why does that show that he's cunning, Elder Bell, and why does he assume that form? We need to understand, when God made Adam, Adam was placed in an environment of all the creatures, and the Bible says he couldn't find one like him among all the creatures. Mm. Now, To hear, when God gave him Eve, his wife, to hear a serpent speaking must have baffled Eve because here now, there's no one else like us in creation. Mm -hmm. How can this serpent be speaking? And this this is not what I was told. So immediately, the the enemy of God began to play on the mindset of Eve, Mm -hmm. suggesting that it's not quite how God said it. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to show you a spectacular that you may have never observed before. And taking the form of a, of a serpent, serpent helped him to achieve that. Aim. Absolutely. What do you think, Elder Thomas, before I go to Elder Gordon? What do you think? Why not a donkey? Why not a giraffe? Yeah. Why a serpent? That's an interesting question, Elder. The um, Bible just says that he took the form of a serpent. <laughs> we understand that the serpent likely could have had wings, it could fly, it has its dazzling beauty mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. Um, the way in which the serpent moved mm-hmm. must have been rather interesting. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, a bird could have been in the tree also that could have eaten the fruit and say, hey, look, it's good. Right. Um, but for some reason, the serpent seemed to be something of more, even today, serpents seem to be a more charming kind of a <laughs> beast. Oh, so mm. perhaps that's the reason why he was a serpent. <laughs> okay. you know, I, I think to that, I mean, he portrayed as a, as a serpent because he could have fly mm-hmm. and um, he was pretty, he was beautiful. I mean, mm-hmm. he was beautiful to look on. Mm-hmm. So he was kind of mesmerized by his beauty. Yeah. So that's why she actually fought for the, um, you know, his, his deceptiveness. Right. So let me ask you, gentlemen, the question. In talking about the serpent, the devil, yeah. That came to deceive Adam and Eve, or came to deceive more spe- deceive Eve more specifically. Yes. Was God talking about a real person, or was just this fictitious, just symbolism, that kind of way? Was this a real person? Yes, he was a real being. Yes. Real being. He was a, he yes. was a real okay, being. Okay, a real yes. being. He was yes. an angel. Okay. I mean, who was created by God himself. Yes. yes. So he was a real being. Okay. All right. And uh, why is that important to, to, to believe? What rises or falls on whether or not we believe that Satan is a real being that exists and that is working against the purposes of God and the children of God? Elder Thomas. If we, if we don't believe that he's a real being, I think already we are deceived. Mm. And, and wow. for that reason, he also would like us to believe that he's not real. Really? So, so <laughs> uh, uh, 
with if we if we do believe that he's real yeah. if we accept that he's real then we become more cautious yes. as to the direction we take the choices mm -hmm. that we make because mm -hmm. it means that we're not only making choices just of our head yes. but we're making choices depending on directives yeah. from either god or this real being that's that wants to point. deceive us yeah elbel yes. powerful point elder thomas made because what better advantage has the enemy on his enemy mm. than to dupe his enemy into thinking that he does not exist. That's That's right. Right. You know where the strength of a sniper comes from? Not because he has that long mm. range powerful rifle, but nine out of 10 times they're out of sight. That's out right. of sight. You right. can't, you can't see them. Yeah. Absolutely. Come I mean, what, what, it mean, what it means for us today <laughs> is, yeah. is that what it means for us today is, is that our, our minds are now kind of better focused on not just the emotion. Mm -hmm. Okay. Or, or that which captures our imagination. Right. It is now going to be required to go beyond that mm -hmm. and reason and think things through. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. But like Elder Thomas is saying, if we don't believe, then technically we don't have to expand our mind beyond emotion. Mm -hmm. And so everything that dazzles could catch our, catch our attention. All right. But believing that he's real, using this trickery or deception, yeah. we better guard ourselves yes. against temptation yes. right. today. Okay, go ahead and go but right if ahead. the devil is not real, I mean, who is the who's responsible for all this destruction and the problems that we have in the world? You have to be somebody else. Mm. So this is not a fictitious person. This is a real person who is the enemy of God, mm -hmm. who comes down and de de deceive the whole world mm -hmm. and want God's people to be lost. All right. So as the passage open, attention is drawn to this yeah. serpent, this real being, this one. Mm -hmm. And we, the, the, the writer also wants us to understand he's subtle. Mm -hmm. That's right. And yes. his trade, his trick in trade is deception. Let's see how this begins to unfold. Let's read verse 2 again, Gordon, verse 1 again and 2. Now the serpent was more stubble than any beast of the field uh -huh. which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said ye shall not eat of every tree All right. of the garden? So stop there again. Hath God said thou shalt not eat of every tree of the garden? Does mm. he pass himself off as an enemy of God right away? No. Um, he doesn't sound like an enemy. Mm. Um, it, it, it sounds and coming from an animal or mm. beast mm -hmm. um, to, to the only human beings on the planet. It, it, it would sound as if he was interested to know what was right, what was good to do. Mm -hmm. Did God really say Why? that? Why? Yeah, because he was in the tree. So, I mean, if God said perhaps he should not be in the tree. So he's fine, you know, did God really say it? Absolutely. And besides, Elder Bell, what of God is he using or referring to here in speaking to Eve? He's using God's very word. Yes. Yeah. Mm. And, and, and I was more saying, I was there before you. Mm. So I happen to know what God meant. Mm -hmm. Hmm. So, <laughs> I'm serious. Okay. I was there before you, okay. and I have to know what God meant. Okay. So I'm going to tell you what God really meant. Okay. And he's probably probably was maybe eating one of the fruit and says, "Well, this is very delicious. I mean, <laughs> I'm still alive. I mean, if you eat of it, mm -hmm. you're going to be alive as well." But mm -hmm. note that from the very <laughs> answer, he is using God's word. Yes. word. Yes. He's quoting yes. God's word. We're yes. going to come to that again at the great temptation with yes. our Lord in. Uh, Matthew chapter 4, right. where he uses the very word of God. Yes. So there is something that we notice very early on mm. about this enemy of God. He uses the good things of mm. God, That's right. but puts them, twists them, yes. puts them to bad purposes. Absolutely. Has yeah. he changed today? No, I, 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 was, I remember a, a, a quote in the Bible that says, uh, he's telling um, Jesus, throw yourself down and mm -hmm. the angels of God will help you, uh, hold you up. Mm -hmm. you know, so that is a kind of deception that he used all right. the time. Mm -hmm. Misquoting. He's misquoting. Absolutely. All right. Beautiful. All right. So we see that half God said. So he comes and he goes to this lady, Eve. Mm -hmm. Notice he's cunning. He's yeah. subtle. Yes. And so he doesn't pass himself off as an enemy of God first because he's here using God's word. That's right. That's right. But notice what else it says to the um, 
to, 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 to the woman, had God said you shall not surely eat of every tree of the mm. garden? Does he sound like he's bursting into a full argument there with the lady right away, Ella Thomas? Uh, not mm. necessarily. Ah, that's Not right. necessarily. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, he's, he's uh, like you say, he's, he's repeating what God has mm -hmm. said. Um, is it exactly this is what God said? Yeah. Yeah. So um, she could recall, yes, God said that. Yeah. God yeah. did say yeah. that you should, we should not eat a book. Right. So I, I don't mean to open up an argument with you, but mm. just for clarity's sake, is this really yes. what God said? It's the kind of subtlety, yeah, right? It's, it's a subtle uh, and a most persuasive mm. question mark. Mm -hmm. As much as a rhetorical question, mm -hmm. mm. is really God said that? But, and he didn't, uh, um, you know, have like an argument with her. Mm -hmm. He no. didn't want, sound angry. No. He right. just wanted to convince her. Had God said, right. no. you should not eat of the food? But, and what yeah. better way to convince a person than to say, I've been there. I tried it okay. yeah, myself. Right. <laughs> you know, like Gordon really said. Right. Yeah. And so he may have suggested, like Gordon rightly said, that don't be afraid. I, I mean, you're sure this is what you heard? Because I think I do differently. Okay. Yes, yeah. And so we, we, we are sometimes, we might even say, but it really doesn't matter. Let's see what God really meant. Okay. Hmm. But notice what he did. Follow the text. Yeah. Hmm. Ella Thomas, he began with a question. Yes. You know the power of a question is the Socratic method. That's what the best hmm. teachers use. Yes. Because once you ask a question, what goes off when I ask you a question, Elder Thomas? You're looking for an answer. You're, you're thinking. Yeah, it's thinking, you're exactly. Thinking. And, yeah. and if I frame it around a particular material that you would have thought or come to believe that it would be true, but yes. I frame it in a question, it begins to open up what? Imagination. That's right. That's and right. doubt. And you begin and to could be, yes. begin to want to think of it in different frames That's and right. perspective. That's Where right. is he going with this now? What am I missing here? What you, you see you see the tactic? Yes. Oh, yes. The tactic is there. You see the skillfulness. Mm -hmm. So the question is if Satan was able to deceive, if Satan was able to deceive innocent, mm. perfect Adam perfect. and Eve, yeah. the question is how much more? vulnerable are we? And what is our best defense against his deception? So let's deal with that. How much more vulnerable are we <laughs> than Adam and Eve? Quickly, a little bit. Um, we are more vulnerable because we don't have the, the, um, the mindset of Satan in terms of his subtlety. Explain. Okay, Satan, we are no match for Satan. Okay. Let me use biblical terms. Okay. We, are no match. We, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities. So against why are we no match for him? What because does, yeah. Satan was created originally the higher than we were created. Okay. He was created as an angel in heaven. So that gave him an advantage of It not? gave him an advantage in wisdom. Okay. And we sold out. We would have grown, had man not taken out that food, he would have grown in total wisdom. But man fell short of that capacity of wisdom when he gave him, when he was deceived by the enemy. So let me put it this way, because you're taking me to a logical end that I have to ask you. Yeah. Christ came and took what Adam and Eve had yeah. before they fell. Yes. And Christ did not fall to the same powerful Satan yes. operating in the flesh that yeah. Adam and Eve held. Yes. That's right. So how, how, how do you stuff? Didn't, wasn't it not possible then for Adam and Eve to have resisted Satan? It's certainly, it was possible. And I think the question you asked first mm -hmm. is that um, you're looking at, we're looking at perfect beings yes. Yes. In, in the beginning yes. who uh, still was deceived yeah. by his cunning. Mm -hmm. uh, we have fallen yeah. in wisdom, ah, in understanding, mm -hmm. in knowledge. Yeah. We have fallen yeah. to a place where sometimes even the dust at the Lord confuse us. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so, uh, and the other thing is that Adam and Eve had the advantage of hearing God saying with his own voice, yeah. giving the instructions. Okay. We have book, we have uh, writings. Mm -hmm. And um, and people would say, well, it's man writing. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> how can it be God's word? Yeah. So, so there's more tendency to, um, it's, it's easier yeah. to say, well, that is not what it really means yeah. Yeah. when God says so, so, so. Right. So it's, it's easier for us in that form to 
be deceived if we don't implicitly or explicitly trust in God. All right. Yeah, you know, the, powerful um, point. We have fallen. They weren't. Yeah. The devil. I mean, I mean, it's it's it was easier for Adam and Eve not to sin because of the fact that they never knew sin. Mm. They came from a perfect environment. Mm. We all have sinned and come short. Yeah. So it's easier for the devil to deceive us yeah. because we have sinned. Okay. All right. Bob. So, Elder Bell, yes. again, sentence or two. What is our best defense against his deceptions? Best defense is the word of God. Go yes. back to the word in the beginning. Okay. God created. So, how do I use the word of God? We use the word of God. Against Just like devil. Jesus did in, in when he was tempted. Mm -hmm. It is written. So, how did Jesus use the word? He said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone. So he Trusted. quoted the he quoted exact, exact word. words of what God said in the okay. beginning. Mm. So he used the exact, <laughs> simple <laughs> word of Well put. God. And he yeah. trusted the plain, simple word, word of, of God. God. That's right. I mean, he trusted God. Mm -hmm. Eve used the word of God. In fact, Eve told us that um, God also said that you should not touch it. Yeah. Because we, we didn't hear so that what before. Did she do? What did she do? So, so, so Eve went even further. When she did that, when she, she added that. to the word of God. Yes. Well, I wouldn't <laughs> say that she added. Because he never told her. He never told her not to talk. Well, That's right. I, I see it as it, it, uh -huh. it wasn't in the narrative. Uh -huh. We didn't get that piece of information. Uh -huh. In All right, the beginning. Let, let's look so, at the text because that's where we want to compare next yes. because you're bringing up a very important point there. Yeah. But it's a, so uh, Genesis chapter 2, 16 and 17. Gordon, you read that again. We want to take Genesis chapter 3, verses 1 to 6, Elder Thomas, and we're going yes. to compare these as we read. Yes. So, Gen Elder Gordon, go with verse 16. Genesis chapter 2? Yes. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat. No, no, read slowly. Mm -hmm. Let's and, go. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, uh -huh. Of every tree of, of every the garden, tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat. That's why every, every tree. tree you may freely eat. Mm -hmm. That's positive right. statement. That's right. All right, okay. But of the tree of knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it. Yes. For in the day thou eatest thereof, Thou shalt surely die. But of the tree of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. Mm. A command. Yes. That's right. Clear and simple. Clear command. Thou shalt not eat of it. That's right. He didn't go on to say anything else. If you eat of it in the day, you yes. shall die. Elder Thomas, let's go to chapter 3, verses 1 to All 6. All right. Yeah. So chapter 3, verse 1 says, Now the serpent was more crafty than any other beast of the field mm -hmm. which that the Lord God had made. Mm -hmm. He said to the woman, mm -hmm. Did God actually say, You shall not eat of any tree in the garden? Stop there. How Perfect. has he twist what God said? God and what God said again. Read what God said. Uh, chapter 2, verse 16. Yes. So, um, and the Lord God commanded the man, saying, yeah. Of every tree in the garden, of the garden, thou mayest freely eat. All right. Mm. Elder Thomas, a positive command there that God yes. says, Of every tree of, of every the garden, tree. you right, freely right. eat. How did Satan put it? He said, did God actually say you should, you not. shall not eat of any ah. tree in the garden? So that is a what? That is a negative way of putting That's it, right? right? That's yes. right. That's notice, right. notice that. All right. All right. What did God say in verse 17, God? But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou yes. shalt not eat of it. Yes. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, Thou shalt surely die. Thou shalt surely. Let's go on, mm. Elder Thomas. Let's examine verse, that. Verse 2? Yes. And the woman said to the serpent, uh -huh. We may eat of the fruit of the trees in the garden. Uh -huh. But God Stop said... Elder Thomas. Mm -hmm. How does she begin? We may eat yes. of every tree, of the fruit mm. of the garden. Yes. yes. But... But God said, mm -hmm. you shall not eat of the fruit of the tree that is in the midst of the garden, mm -hmm. neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. All right. What's different between her statement and God's statement, the way God put it? <laughs> but we see here from, yeah. from here that yeah. she's saying, you should not, that God said, yeah. neither should you touch it. Uh, 
in the beginning uh, we hear God speaking but um, was God speaking to both of them uh, or was he speaking to the man by himself I, I, I saw well, he had to somewhere that to the you there is plural <laughs> plural yeah it's, so it's, he was Judea speaking to plural. both of them yeah. so when God said that you should that when he said to Adam you should not eat yeah. of this tree yeah. you were speaking to both of both them, of them. The, the you yeah. is because they were one yeah yeah all right, all right. You, you, you know mm. uh, so what god said she actually said the same thing mm. but the devil came and said something else but no, wait, she no, said the what, same what, thing what, or what, did she add to it what what well, is yeah, what she had looks like, to touch it, it looks like she added something she to it uh, something else. Um, but is it in uh, the narrative uh -huh. the one that writes what is recorded uh -huh. that he did not include that part, uh -huh. but allow her to include that part. Uh, what do you no, think, no, Elabel? I, I think the Bible read, is very clear. Yeah. Read, let's read verse 16 ahead. again. Let's read verse 16. Yes. What does it say? And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, of every so, tree, again, the Lord God do what? Commanded who? the man. The who? The, the man. man. Singular. OK. Commanded the man. Yeah. Mm. So right it's always God gave instructions to man. But, man, wait. but and man, then is man, man pass man, it on to Eve. No, is man anthropos, meaning mankind, or is uh, man male? Excellent, excellent question. Excellent yes. question. Is if you it, if you follow the sequence of the record <laughs> yeah. here, Adam then had to name the animals in verse 19 and 20. Uh -huh. So then Eve was in the in, in the place yet. Uh-huh. Even were, Eve was not yet created. Right. Based on the sequence mm -hmm. of the events. Mm -hmm. So up to in verse chapter 2. Eve then is, is, is in chapter 2, later on, 27, 26, 27, Eve was great, was formed. But if, if you go down that road, mm -hmm. at the end of the day, God shows up yeah. and he holds both of them as for the same yes, way. Yes, yes. 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 I agree with you. So because the bottom line too. is, they both, both understood. They both understood, they both, they both understood just what, what the Lord was saying. Right. Right. I agree right. with you. Right. Right. And um, what my um, take on this, the mm. question that you raised, mm. is that it is a question of do not eat of the fruit of the tree in the midst of the garden. Mm -hmm. The devil got Eve so confused uh -huh. that she thought she could eat of all the fruits of the trees. But of this one, we shouldn't touch it. Now, God never said you can't touch the tree, mm -hmm. don't eat the fruit. Mm -hmm. And so she put and restraint on them that God didn't put in the first place. But don't you see her beginning to act as if she is God? She's adding to the yes, word of God. That's exactly. right, that's right. Because going. that was not said anywhere exactly. there. Exactly. And she is now adding that as if, well, she is now beginning to add in the, uh, add exactly. to, and that's the danger. If we add to the word of God, we open up. What she did was yes. open up a treasure trove right, exactly. for the devil to walk in. Mm -hmm. How you see that, Ella does? <laughs> you know, I, I, I really yeah. see it a little differently okay. because, um, you know, sometimes when we, when we look in the Bible, we find that there, there is something that was said. Mm. And, and we don't get the, the, the entire thing mm -hmm. until you go somewhere else. Mm -hmm. You recognize that something else was said, was mm -hmm. added to what was said first. Okay. Um, if, if we put Eve, if we look at Eve in that regard, then we look at Eve lying mm -hmm. on God mm -hmm. and she had no reason to lie. Mm -hmm. um, I don't see anything that she would have a reason to lie. Mm -hmm. um, the first thing was really to eat of the tree. Mm -hmm. so, so when I look at it, I see that Eve is just giving us a little more information mm -hmm. than what originally was stated that God said. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the... Moses is writing, and he wrote this, this part of it. Uh -huh. This Moses little Moses is writing under the inspiration under of the Holy, Holy, Holy Spirit. Right. Spirit. Yes. Right. So he writes this part Who of it. It doesn't make a mistake. It doesn't make a mistake. But yeah. it doesn't mean that that is all that God said. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> That's the point I'm making. Yeah. It doesn't mean that is all that God uh -huh. said. Uh -huh. Eve now is telling us mm -hmm. that, hey, God said even a little, he went a little further than mm -hmm. that by even saying, don't even touch it. Mm -hmm. so, so I gather that Eve is quite clear mm -hmm. as to the command that is given. Mm -hmm. yes. So there's no reason even to add that little yeah. part. There's no reason to be even close to the tree. Okay. Right, even more to eat of it. So you, 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 your position is that you think in the original instruction given to Adam and Eve, God had said, you should not touch you it. You should either. not touch it. Mm. Okay. What I, do I don't want to say what the Bible doesn't say. Okay. <laughs> I, I'm going to say, I'm going to say, um, yeah. 
it, the command was not to eat. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. and, um, and so the appetite should not have been tempted. Okay. And I, I want to see where, see where Thomas is going. Okay. Whereby that, that one of the best way to resist temptation is mm -hmm. to move away from it. And so if touching it would want to make you understand or eat it, then I would have refrained. And if I was Adam talking to my wife Eve, mm -hmm. I would say, don't even, we're now in touch with you, let's keep away from it. Mm -hmm. So that would be my human response. Okay. To, but, but for God says, don't eat it. And I started with that. But I just want to say something here. Yeah. I mean, what is, what, my opinion, what Eve was saying is that God said that we're not supposed to eat this food. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it's so bad, right? That we're not even supposed to touch it. Okay. Because God had said that we're not supposed to eat it. But did and God so, say that? God said that we're not supposed to eat it. That's but right. she added on that mm. saying that it is so absolute. Abs it's, it's so bad that mm. we shouldn't even touch it. Okay. Because the command that God <laughs> gave us, okay. we should not so eat it. So you think she was doing okay. good by expanding on God's word or adding to God's word what he had not said? I think what happened she is meant that well. She, she, she meant well, okay. meaning that it was yeah. God said it, right? And we're not saying even, even touch it. Yeah. But you, you, you see what yeah, happens yeah, when we begin to, to add things, add what to what God does not and say. And we see that to do today's uh, word. I'll go beyond yes. what the we text does not say. World, with people that you say, uh, you changing God's word to make it fit into culture. Okay. And and, and um, this and what do you call it? Um, culture and things that we of tradition. Okay. And we must be very mm -hmm. careful right. that we don't make scripture say what it doesn't say. All right. Yeah. So. There was God with a command, yes. you shall not eat. The devil comes with a question. A command is truth, a command is certainty. Question comes with doubt, impugns yes. motives, yes. impugns yes. character. What's the intention of the two? two? Look, look at the two, look at their intention. When God gave the command, what was God's intention? Was it for the good or for the bad of Adam? For the good. For the good. Protect for the them. Good. Yes. When Satan comes and poses that question and tries to move them away from what was his intention? To deceive. To deceive. To deceive. But did he make that? To yes. deceive. Yes. But did he no, make he did. it look as if he was? That was not. No. But what he promised them, they would have what? Life. What? Eternal life. Immortality. 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 Mm. They would not surely die. Yeah. In the day that they eat of it, you shall not surely die, and you shall be like God, knowing mm. good and evil. So God was withholding knowledge of good and evil from yes. you, and he was also withholding immortality from, from them. you. Yes. And, and but, let's, let's go ahead. But what his, it was, it, was he telling the truth? No, he was trying to deceive them. It's total so it was deception. A so he was a what? It was a lie, right? It was a lie, yeah. Yes, so, yes, But yes. it was subtle yes. enough. Listen uh -huh. what he says. Uh -huh. God says, in the day you eat of it, you shall truly die. Yeah. If you read that in, in, in Dying, straight you language, shall die. Mm -hmm. it, it suggests that the day you eat it, that day you will die. Mm -hmm. mm. A 24-hour day. That, that's something, 24-hour day you die. Sunset to sunset day. Yeah. Well, <laughs> dying you will die is what the text yes. is, the original text. Dying, dying you, you will, will die. die. Yes. But what is happening here? Uh -huh. The devil is saying, I'm going to show you, eat it and you will not die. Okay. Mm. No, he didn't say you won't die eternally. You won't <laughs> die. So he is putting the emphasis on dying now. Yes. And that will not happen. And so even when she ate it, I mean, the Bible says that her, her image, or, I don't, uh, uh, perhaps let me change but, the application and implication is when she ate of the food, mm -hmm. her, her, her outlook, her reflection, everything changed. Yes. Mm -hmm. Because suddenly she was elevated, like uh, Kem says, mm -hmm. to be equal to God. Okay. <laughs> All right. So he won the argument, didn't he? Yes. So he used this. Convincing, action. yes. Yeah, he and convinced, he convinced yeah. Eve. He deceived Eve yeah. by. Mm -hmm. Trying to tell her, mm -hmm. uh, she obviously was convinced that God cannot be trusted. Yeah. He's withholding knowledge from you. Yes. He's withholding immortality from you. Mm -hmm. He hasn't t said the truth to you. So his intention was the opposite to God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The content of what he said was the opposite to God. That's yes. right. You understand? And the method of what he used was opposite to God. God mm -hmm. is a truthful God. Mm -hmm. He is a deceptive God. And John 8, 44, remember, mm -hmm. says, you belong to your father, the devil and you mm. want to carry out your father's desire. Notice how the text put it. He was a murderer from the beginning, beginning yes. not holding to the truth, mm. for there is no truth in him. in him. 
in him. Mm. No truth in him. So mm -hmm. even when he comes at you with the word of God, it's not a truth it's in the way he's using it. Yes. Exactly. I love yes. that in the camp. Yes. Uh, even the truth does not, is not truth yes. when he uses it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He comes at it in a depth. I mean, Very powerful way. The truth okay. is not truth when he uses yeah. it. Yeah. So, because it makes with lies. Right. Yes, right. right. Yes, so right. what do we need to guard against here from this lesson as we see the enemy coming at us in a deceptive way? Do we think that his followers are going to mimic how he goes about applying his trade? Of course. It's, yeah. Of course. Yeah. 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 Paul yeah. said it, right? Yeah. No wonder his ministers are transformed into angels of light, of light yes, yeah. so that they can deceive. So we need to guard against deception. Remember, Jesus yeah. said one of the things that will characterize the, the last, last days, days. Yes. is deception. Yeah. Mm -hmm. is and deception. how we guard against deception is by mm -hmm. knowing the word of God. Knowing and following and, following and obeying and, and trusting the word of God. That's right. yes. and, and a very important point, that what God says is sufficient. Yes, Amen. Not, not stuff. questioning. Amen. Not questioning. No. And it's good. Right of God. And it's good. Yeah. Nothing yeah. added and nothing subjected. Nothing yeah. added, nothing subjected. I, I like that, Elder God. <clears throat> Not so questioning. the forbidden food, basically a test of their loyalty to exactly. God. Exactly. You know, and we see that in the command, the prohibition was meant to preserve their life. So yes. let us not be fooled by Satan. Now they ate and what happened? They end up hiding before God. Genesis mm. chapter 3. Uh, 7 to 13, Elder God. And the eyes of them both were open mm -hmm. and they knew that they were naked. Yeah. And they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. Mm -hmm. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. Uh -huh. Another man and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord mm -hmm. God among the trees of the garden. And the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden, and mm -hmm. I was afraid yeah. because I was naked and I hid myself. All right. Mm -hmm. And he said unto him, Who told thee that thou was naked? Mm -hmm. Hast thou eaten of the tree where I have commanded thee that thou shouldest not eat? Mm -hmm. And the man said, The woman whom thou gavest to me, she gave me the tree, <laughs> and I eat. Yes. And the Lord God said unto the woman, what is this that thou hast done? And the woman said, The serpent beguiled me, uh -huh. and I did eat. Uh -huh. And the Lord God said unto the serpent, Because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above mm -hmm. all cattle, mm -hmm. and over all every beast of the field, and, every, and upon thy belly thou shalt go, and thus thou shalt eat all the days of thy life. All right. Look at it now. So here's a question, Elder Thomas, beginning with you. Why did Adam and Eve feel the need to hide before God? Because they disobeyed God. Mm. Obviously, something had changed. Okay. The um, Bible says that they were naked. They, they were naked. They were naked. Which they weren't before. Which they weren't before. Mm -hmm. um, they, there was some sort of the glory of God. And, and the Bible tells us yeah. that we have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Right. So there was something about the glory mm -hmm. that, that they had before mm -hmm. that was dismissed. And it wasn't close that they could have just um, mm -hmm. taken up. And, and put on again. They yeah. lost something that they just couldn't get back. Mm -hmm. And um, and knowing that God um, expected to meet with them and to converse with them and, and, and he was going to see that they don't have mm -hmm. what he left them with. Mm -hmm. They were ashamed and so they went in hiding. Absolutely. I, I would say that they lost their garments of glory. Okay. They had garments of glory mm -hmm. and when they sinned, they lost that garment of glory. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. Mm -hmm. the, the, when, when they sinned, even nature rebelled. And the effect of nature against their bodies began to have some effect. Because the, that shield of protection was lost. Mm -hmm. And so they began to feel the stain of cold, mm -hmm. morning heat, the sun, sunlight. And the coolness of the night was too cool and begin to realize, hey, something is wrong. So sin makes us naked. Sin strips us of mm. the image of God. That's sin right. strips yes. us yes. of that innocence yes. mm -hmm. and um, makes us naked. That's right. And yes. what did they try to do to cover their nakedness? Find, provide type of clothing to cover themselves. Yeah, fig leaves. They fig, fig leaves, fig leaves yeah. together, right? Yeah. Is it still the same today that when we are deceived by sin, it leaves us naked, hollow, ashamed, and stuff, and then we still try to cover ourselves. Yeah. How did David do it? Remember? Lie after lie, I mean, 
trying to cover yes by and just digging deeper holes as uh -huh. you would say you dig one hole to cover another mm -hmm. one and mm -hmm. you can't so you have to dig another one yes yeah so we keep digging holes absolutely but can those coverings we clothe us and the bell no what alone can it's not it's us? only the blood of jesus christ mm -hmm. Only the garment of Christ's righteousness. That's yes, right. Yes. I mean, everything and how else do we is, get that? We get that by an imputed righteousness. Okay. It's imputed to us as a gift from God. All right. And how does John 3, 16 puts it, Elder Thomas? It says, God so loved the world yes. that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believed yes. should not perish but have eternal life. Exactly. And um, that, that's the king. Now, the next question is, why did God ask the question, where are you? I mean, God, God knew where they were. God knew what they had done. God mm. knew exactly where they were. So what's the point of the question? Well, I mean, he, he knew exactly where they were, but um, he was asking them, um, you know, wh wh why have you done mm -hmm. um, this thing? Wh why have you sinned? Okay. So he was asking them, where are you? He knew exactly where they were, mm -hmm. but they were hiding from God because they have, they have sinned. Okay, so to help them realize what they had done They've and for done. what other purpose? Um, just like today, we can't get help unless we acknowledge the help we need. Okay. And, mm. and God wanted to bring to their awareness they need help. And when you know you need help, what do you do? You call out for help. To okay. God. Yeah. So to bring them to repentance. Bring them to, yeah. That's right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, to, to bring them back to a place where they recognize that he, you don't need to hide from me. Mm. That's right. Um, I know you're hiding. Where were you, of course? Yeah. Adam heard the voice. He had to respond wherever mm -hmm. he was hiding. It didn't make any sense right. because he had to respond to the voice. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so God was really trying to bring him back to a place where, hey, we can talk about this. Right. And, and right. there's a way you get salvation by repenting, yeah. asking God for yeah. forgiveness. Absolutely. Yeah. But instead, they tried to play the blame game at first. Mm. You're sorry. Yeah. If Adam blame Eve. God, Yes. To Eve, yes. the woman that you gave me to be mm. with me. Eve blamed the serpent, serpent that you made. That you made. <laughs> yes. yes. Yeah. And it was God. a blame game. Uh, how, why, why are we so prone to blame others? When we, we, don't, have... we don't want to take the responsibility mm. uh -huh. of our actions. Okay. And mm. so we blame somebody else. Yeah. Somebody it makes else us feel it. better? It makes us feel better? Uh, in a sense. I mean, yes. For how, but, long? But For how long? For, not for a long period of time, because it comes back, <laughs> comes back to haunt you after a while. Yes. Yeah, but did you, <laughs> did you notice something subtle, Elder Kerman, <laughs> Thomas? Mm. God made us, and when God came to look for Adam and Eve, he identified himself as God. Mm. When the question came of, why did you eat? Nobody blamed Satan. Mm. Well, the, 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 um, the woman blames Satan. No. She says she, she, the devil deceived no, her. No, 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 no. She didn't blame the devil. devil she didn't she blame the serpent. As well, far as she the, the serpent. But the, 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 serp the serpent is the devil also. No, no, the serpent was not the devil. The serpent. the serpent is not the devil in that case. <laughs> in the Garden of Eden, the serpent was a serpent. Okay. But the he was the devil before. It. The devil used it. Yes. Today we have the devil using people on the pulpit. And they wouldn't acknowledge it. They refuse to think it is God. Because he looks and speaks like God, but it's not God. But they would never be believe that it's a, not a spirit. Mm. And what I'm trying to impress here today on, on those who are listening, when God identifies himself, he says, I am God. I am the I am. There's no question. When the yes. devil comes to deceive, he hides behind a curtain and speaks through some other means or medium. Mm. And so in that God of Eden, he uses a serpent. So he himself is not in, suddenly he's not in the picture. It's not me, I was out of it. And this is what happened. The devil throws us down, destroys us, and suddenly it's not me. Well, even though he come under the, the, these disguise, we know exactly who he is. Ah. He disguised himself as, you know, the, 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 the serpent. You. That's right. But we know that he's a devil. Yeah. That's right. Mm. He acts like the, the, the serpent. Yeah, but yeah. we know that he's a devil. Yeah, we know he's a devil now. That's right. We've been we, we made <laughs> to understand that. But until then, but Eve, think blamed Eve the, thought it was the serpent, serpent, and as far as she said, she laid the blame on the serpent. Oh, okay, okay. Mm. So the serpent deceived. Mm. That's what she said. But 
Where well, she did might not have known. If we take granted, she thought she was the serpent. The Bible makes it clear that it was the devil in the That's serpent. That's right. right. Yes. yes. Disguised as the serpent. Yeah. So he was, it was <laughs> the devil himself. The devil yeah. the Disguised as the serpent. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Even Timothy goes on to tell you that. That's he right. The, That's right. Right. the devil right. never said, I am, I am from angel from heaven. You know, he never but spoke to Remember, like his trick is he's subtle. He's more <laughs> subtle. That's right. All right. That's as right. The, the quarterly tells us, to deceive means to give people false hope. Yes. Yeah. Right. And makes them believe that they're doing the right thing. Amen. Mm. That's False right. hope mm -hmm. and make them believe that they're doing the right thing. So that is so very important. Now, the fate of the serpent, because this is the crux of That's the right. matter. Genesis chapter 3, verse 15 brings us right back to our memory text. Mm -hmm. And I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your offspring and mm -hmm. hers. He will crush your head mm -hmm. and you will strike his heel. Yeah. Mm -hmm. In a nutshell, what is the fate of the serpent? The, the, God is going to bring judgment on the serpent. That's, All right. that's, the, that's the fate of the, the, yeah. the Elder serpent. Thomas, how you put it? He's going to be annihilated. He's going to be annihilated. That's right. Yes. He judgment. loses. Yeah. 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 Elder yeah. Bell, how you put it? Uh, hey, his, his whole supposed kingdom will be crushed. Yeah. Mm. Mm -hmm. And notice how he's going to do it. The text says, I will put enmity that's right. between you and the woman, between your offspring and hers. Mm -hmm. He then the offspring mm -hmm. will crush your head and you will strike his heel. Mm -hmm. Who is that prophecy fulfilled in? Let's look at Hebrews chapter 2, verse 14, mm -hmm. Romans 16, verse 20, and Revelation 12, 17. 17. We already re uh, we read Genesis 3, 15 already. Hello, Thomas, you have that quickly? Hebrews chapter 2, verse 14. Yes. For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, mm -hmm. he also himself likewise took part of the same, mm -hmm. that through death he might destroy him that had power over death, that is the devil. Wow. And that is speaking of Christ. It is Christ. through Christ yes. that that prophecy, that promise of hope exactly. will be fulfilled, where mm -hmm. Satan will be annihilated. That's right. Okay. Elder Thomas, go Revelation ahead. 12 and verse mm -hmm. 17, the, then the dragon became furious with the woman and mm -hmm. went to make war with the rest of her offspring mm -hmm. on, who, on those who kept keep the commandments of God and hold to the testimony of Jesus. Yeah. And he stood on the sand, sorry, that's oh. another verse. Okay. Okay. Romans, Romans 16, Romans 16 20. Mm -hmm. Yes. And the God of peace mm -hmm. shall bruise Satan under your feet mm -hmm. shortly. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen. Amen. So mm -hmm. Jesus Christ will bruise him, will crush him yeah. once and for all. But every save, every person that is snatched from Satan's kingdom yes. is bruised. That's right. There will be no deception yes. anymore. Yes. All the troubles that Mm -hmm. And the deception that Satan has caught over yeah. millennia, mm -hmm. he will be judge and the final analysis. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. But what is interesting, whereas it is prophesied in Genesis 3, 15, you notice Romans 16, 20 yeah. speaks to a final and future mm -hmm. fulfillment. Hebrews right. 2, 14 says it has happened in the sense that Jesus died to destroy the work of yes. the devil. So every person who by faith mm -hmm. comes to salvation through Jesus Christ. The devil is bruised. And Revelation 12 tells us that one day he will finally be yeah. destroyed. Yes. He and his imps. And we know that when that is happened, God will create new heavens and new earth. Yes. And all his saints will dwell with him. So folk, the picture may looks, look bleak, but all is not lost. God wins. Christ wins. And those who trust in him wins. We might have disobeyed and resulted in disaster, but thank be to God, there is deliverance through Christ Jesus. Amen. Thank you for studying with us. That's where we have to leave it for this week until we come your way again. May God bless and may he keep you.